Do you want to know how to go from this to this? Then keep on watching. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching and if this is your first time here and you don't know me yet, my name is Lila, so lovely to meet you. In this video, I am going to show you how to track text in Premiere Pro. I have had a lot of requests on my other video where I showed you how to do the exact same thing in After Effects if you can do this in Premiere Pro. So I thought, you know what? I get it, we're more comfortable in Premiere Pro, so let's just give it a go, let's just do it in Premiere Pro. There is a difference between After Effects and Premiere Pro. I'm not gonna lie, there is a good reason why people, myself included, use After Effects for these things. But that doesn't mean that you cannot achieve the same results in Premiere Pro. Now it works a little bit different. The only way to do this is to track it manually. But don't click away just yet because yes, it takes a little bit more time. But that doesn't mean that it is more difficult. It is actually quite simple. Everything I do on this channel, it's so much easier than it looks. So let's start with our first shot. And the first shot is actually a shot that I stole from another video where I biked by the camera and I revealed text. But this is also the perfect example to use to track text because there is motion, because we want to follow me on the bike. So the first thing we need to do is put our clip on the timeline and then we need to create some text. And the easiest way to create text is by pressing T on your keyboard and then click on the screen right here. But of course, you don't have to use text. You don't have to create a text layer. You can also use a logo or a PNG file, which is actually what I am going to do. So I'm going to delete this text layer and add my callout PNG file. Now, the first thing that we want to do, because we have to track this manually, is find a good frame. So I am going to move my toggle head forward to the beginning of the timeline and find a good frame. Then we have to click on our text layer or PNG file or whatever it is, whatever you put on V2 and go to effect controls. Now right here, this is what we're going to work with. We are going to work with the position. What is important is to first position it where you would like it to start. So in this case, as you can see right here, it's not really want what I want to track. I much rather track my backpack. So I'm just going to change the X and the Y values. So now that we have put our text or our logo where we want it to be, we have to click on the little stopwatch right here. And as you can see right here, you see that a little diamond appeared and this is your keyframe and this is what we're going to work with. So now what we have to do is we have to move a few frames forward and then adjust the values accordingly. If you want to move one or multiple frames forward, hit the right arrow on your keyboard. I like to move a few frames forward, whether that is three frames or five frames, because if you do it that way, your animation will look a lot smoother than if you change it every frame. When you do it every frame, it will it will just look a little bit like this, or it can look a little bit like this, and that is not what we want. What we want is something that like butter, super smooth. So I usually move like three, four, five frames forward. So now I'm going to adjust the values again. And if you have a clip like mine, it is super easy because I'm just biking horizontally. So I only have to change the value of the horizontal or the X, 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 X. So just repeat this until you're at the end of the clip. So let's see what we have now. So that looks pretty good, but as you can see, we haven't animated the beginning of the clip yet. So now we go back to the first keyframe and we move backwards to the beginning of the timeline. If you find that it's not tracking properly, just go to the frame where it doesn't look good and adjust it right there. So adjust the position right there to really make it look like the text or the logo is stuck to the person or the object in your video. If you want to fake the motion blur, what you can do is go right here to effects then type in blur, then select directional blur and add it to your PNG file or your text layer. As you can see, it just showed up right here in effect controls. And what you wanna do now is you wanna change the direction and you wanna change the blur length. So the first thing I always do is I change the blur length and then I change the direction because if you change the direction first, you don't see what's happening because there is no blur yet. As you can see right now, it's going vertically and we want it to go horizontally. So we're going to change the direction to 90 degrees. This already looks a lot better, but for my video, this is a, this is a little bit much. Like I am not biking that fast. So I'm going to lower the blur length to about six. 
So let's play this video again. This is just a very easy example, right? Because I'm just biking by at the same speed. There's nothing really interesting happening. It's not very complicated. So if you want to track text like this, super easy, you're done. But let me just quickly show you how I would track text in Premiere Pro on a video that has a little bit more, like where the motion is a little bit more complicated. So I imported the clip from the video that you may have watched before this one, which is where I show you how to do the exact same thing in After Effects. Basically, we have to do the same thing that we did earlier, but because this motion is more complex, we need to put a little bit more effort and a little bit more time in it. Let's click on the blue clock and let's start changing our position. So as you can see, this already requires a lot more work and we haven't even added the motion blur yet. So what we need to do now is we need to go back to effects and we need to type in blur again. Drag directional blur to your layer and then change the direction and the blur length again. But this time it is important to enable the keyframes for the direction because the text is moving up and down, left and right. So it's important that our blur isn't only horizontal or isn't only vertical, but actually changes as the text goes up and down, left to right. Do you want to know how to go from this to this? Then keep on watching. As you can see, it is pretty easy to do this in Premiere Pro, but I have to admit, it is actually easier in After Effects. So make sure to check out this video. If you're comfortable doing this in Premiere Pro, trust me, you're gonna love doing it in After Effects. And of course, if you aren't subscribed already, make sure to hit subscribe and the notification bell so we can see each other in future videos and previous videos if you click on this one.